thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I hope uh, my people here will not expect me to say all protocol observed, because that's what we normally say in Nigeria when you want to make a speech. And um, really, when this topic was uh, given to me by my brother, uh, and I asked him why, 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 why? Uh, considering the fact that the embassy doesn't deal with um, issues of mental illness or disorder and stuff like that, and we are not experts in that field. I thought about it, I said, yeah, it's important that we have to talk about this. Now that um, he has started the initiative, and that uh, we have to embrace it. And um, I said, yeah, it's good that uh, we do something. He has taken the bold step, and uh, we'll be glad to support such initiative, and that is why we are here. When you talk about mental health, um, it's a different thing. The last speaker said something that uh, we, they don't know the situation in Nigeria. Uh, the prof has been there, like mm -hmm. he, he said, but I don't think um, he saw it all. Uh, the way we understand mentally ill person, or a person with mental disorder, is somebody who is probably half naked, looking tattered, unkempt, roaming the street or in the marketplace, looking so menacing, dangerous, that you don't get close to. That is the stereotypical view of a mentally ill person. Such persons are always, in most cases, seen as somebody who has been afflicted by mental disorder, probably as a result of a spiritual attack, or maybe uh, it, the person might have committed some acts against the gods, or uh, activities considered as taboo, you know, or he's been bewitched, or he has evil spirit. <laughs> that is the way we understand mentally ill person. We don't, in most cases, see it as um, a, an ailment like any other, you know, health challenge. You understand? That is, but we all know that's a very narrow view of trying to understand this problem. What we do is to take such persons to the uh, traditional healers or spiritual healers to cast out the demon or the satanic attack or spirit. And how do they do them in those places? They put them in chains, they stab them, they flog them. They beat them in order to cast out the spirit, the evil spirit in them. That is the traditional way of treating these people. So, and all that is because they have no idea why a normal person will suddenly go insane. There is a huge stigma attached to mental illness in Africa. So the process of getting the afflicted back to normal life is always very challenging. But from the past speakers, I think we all realize that mental illness goes beyond that. Today, According to the WHO in 2017, there are estimated 40 to 60 million people experiencing mental health problems in Nigeria. In Nigeria today, those who are familiar with the media, you read every day on a daily basis, 
cases of suicide. Suicide amongst youth now is on the, uh, on the increase. Also, anxiety, violence, behavior is very, very high in Nigeria. Violent crimes. These are all partly symptoms of mental illness. So going beyond all this, how does this mental health affect a country's development? It's very, very critical. All the various aspects of mental illness I've just uh, highlighted if you take that to the national government's intervention by way of budgetary appropriation, take it down to the family, how it affects family life, and to the workplace, you can imagine what Nigeria is passing through. Why are we now having this problem? Unfortunately, it is not well uh, given the due attention that it deserves in Nigeria. And this is as a result of several factors. One of it is what I consider to be probably, I cannot say there is no policy on mental health. I cannot say that. But if there is any, I think probably it is very weak to accommodate present day development. We don't have so many institutions. And that is because uh, proper attention has not been paid to this aspect of our health uh, system. Also, we do not have a lot of experts in this area. There are only less than 350 psychiatrists in the whole of Nigeria. 350. But we all heard Mr. William. He said, I think he said 11? OK. So uh, what is the population of Nigeria? over 200 million now. With these 40 to 60 million people afflicted by mental uh, uh, problems. So the experts and those who are knowledge knowledgeable in the, in the area of this mental health are just not there. Capacity is just not there. If you have a mentally challenged person in your family, it's like you're on your own. Now, why are we now having this spike in mental uh, cases in Nigeria? Mental cases, not lunatics or mad people now. We are coming down to the broad understanding of mental health. A lot of challenges. If you are familiar with the media in Nigeria, you will know that we have a serious problem of substance abuse amongst the youths. Substance abuse, in the last two years, it used to be codeine. Codeine, codeine is a cough syrup. It's a cough syrup. It became something that youths were now addicted to seriously, especially in the northern part of Nigeria. That led to the banning of that uh, medicine, codeine. Recently, that changed when it was stopped 
the manufacturing and importation of that drug was stopped. They turned to tramadol. Of course, before now, it used to be a prescription drug in Nigeria, but somehow they turned into something that very dangerous. It was banned again. That's apart from the normal cocaine and um, uh, met, uh, metaphin and um, um, all other type of uh, sophisticated uh, uh, substances. We all know that Nigeria is uh, a monocultural economy, which is oil. And when the international price in oil dips, it affects government's ability to function economically. And when that happens, then the people will suffer. Lifestyle, life conditions of people, well-being of the people will suffer, will reduce. That is why we have a lot of unemployment, youth unemployment. It's a serious problem. Frustration amongst the youth is very high. And that leads to a lot of uh, antisocial behavior. I think it will be largely uh, behold on the government to probably strengthen. Like I said earlier, I'm not very sure if uh, we have a, a policy, the government or national policy on mental health. So if there is any, we need to look at it, broaden it, deepen it, strengthen it. Probably with more intervention programs in this area. But I've, uh, right now, I don't think we have enough of that in Nigeria. When I had the flyer, you spoke with me, I called uh, a friend of mine who is a clinical psychologist in Abuja. I told him about this program and what uh, you um, uh, further discussed with me. I was excited about it. I'm going to let him see uh, today's event. He was very, very excited. And he told me he was working with some youths on substance abuse in Abuja. But I do not think we have anything close to what Mr. William described. How do we address it? It's a problem. That is why we welcome this Laudable Project initiative by our brother and his friends. There is no organized, systematic approach to addressing this problem in Nigeria. There is no framework. So in the light of all what I've said here, we think that the embassy will be ready to support Mr. Sonny and his friends to ensure that we make this project a success in Nigeria. Thank you all for listening.